thank guys playoffs we got a, a another slate of games next week but um so we we we, we touched on this last season my little about Ben Simmons oh my god and I'm trying to figure out for the life of me all right and I get there's a collective bargaining agreement I understand all of this, but if I got $90 million wrapped up in a basketball player and he says he, he says he has emotional issues and mental health issues, first off, mental health is not a game. Let's just, let's just be clear on that. So if he's having mental health issues, this now falls to his agent and his supporting group. If the team is saying, hey, we need him to meet with our psychologist or our medical staff, this isn't like the NBA isn't a entity where a player is rich for the moment. He is changing the lives of a generation of his family members. So it would behoove whoever is in the administration of his team to be like, hey, dude, we just need you to go to this doctor. I ain't going is not an option because your failure affects 20 to 100 to 200 people. You need to go get checked out. I feel like as an organization that's investing so much money into a person, they have the right to request them to go see a doctor. Because if we want and need you to be at a certain you know, well, we're, we're my thing is, we're if it's not in the contract, play the game. and if you can't that, play the if game, that's something that gets you help. You know, yeah. but if you're refusing to help, then you're basically refusing your paycheck at that point. Yeah, that's, that's how why. I if it, whoever wrote that contract, if that's not in as a part of his contract, then that's on them. Oh yeah, he can. Right. Check up, yeah. Check yeah, up yes. the middle so if it's in this contract and he refused to, then he refused to get paid. Exactly. My, so my issue with Ben Simmons is, is that it was all this tough guy, rah rah talk about, I ain't coming there no more, like trade me, get me out of here, whatever the case may be. It was a lot of rah rah. And then when they started talking about, well, if you don't show up, you ain't getting paid. Oh, he there. He's there. Yeah. His agent made sure he's there. Well, if your agent can make sure you're there to get paid, your agent can make sure you're there to get the help that the team needs to see you might need. Now, if there is no mental health issues or you, you're just playing this game, they need to find your life away. They need to find a way to cut you and get rid of you because there are players who play through mental health issues at the detriment to their own health and bodies, and you're not doing them any service by playing these games. Like, that's that bothers me really like that's just something that just bothers me that you're taking yeah, advantage you're of something games. that people need you playing games when there's people actually out here struggling with clinical depression bipolar multi-personality disorder there's so many things that people deal with ptsd i was in the military for 11 years so i know a lot of people that you know deal with that type of issue and that is no joke and for somebody to try to use that because they don't want to do their job, it's disrespectful to anybody that does have those issues. Well, my feeling about the whole situation is you are paid a king's ransom amount of money to play a, a sport. Right. You're, you're not out there on no battlefield. You're not out there making decisions that save lives. You... You're not even in the medical field. You are paid a king's ransom to put a ball through a hoop. Now, I'm not minimizing the importance of sports because I do think it has its place. But in the grand scheme of things, when it comes down to whether you feel like playing and not feel like playing, you holding the whole community hostage because your decision to be who you are is not just affecting that that team on the court. It's everything that's around that community. Like everybody is trying to freaking 
cater to you and you giving them your butt to kiss. Like you got kids that are looking up to you and the next generation coming up or have that mindset with hell. If I'm, I get this scrum, I ain't got to do what I, I just hold them hostage. Basically, what are you doing? I, <laughs> you think, I think LeBron said it the best. He said, we may not intend to be role models, but that's ultimately what it turns out to be. And if we're given a bad image, then that's how it's going to be perceived. There's yeah. no way that you can be on TV, you know, playing 82 games a season, making commercials, doing whatever, and you not end up being somebody role model. There's no way. Or somebody just, even even if it's not a role model status, somebody looking up to you. Right. But you think about all those little kids that begged their parents for a Ben Simmons jersey when he got drafted. Now it's looking like parents are wasting their money on this man's jersey. <laughs> he don't want to be there. He, he, he's showing my kids what I don't want them to be. Right. If I don't want to work, then I ain't going to work. Even though I was going to do it. Even to go deeper than that, for him not wanting to get the help that he may need, he might be pushing that on another talent that says, well, hell, if you do have an issue, you don't have to get no help. Right. Because you don't want to. Like, the team can't make you do it. It's not even about the team. It's about you and getting some help if you need it. Now, if you don't and you're just over there snowing people, then you're going to get what you're going to get. Right. Like, it, them chickens will come home to roost if you're over there just playing the game. Yeah, you're going to reap what you sow. But if you seriously need some help and you're refusing help, come on, man. You can't let that. Do you really have a, my, my question is, do you really have an issue? 